Remember I said before, there's three genders. There's high status men, there's women, and there's low status men. Low status men are going to date the hottest thing they can get their hands on, and they don't care about your political affiliation or how close you are with your family because they don't have any options. So like the idea is like, well, you should have known better when you started dating me. No, that stripper is the best thing he's ever going to get because as everything gets shifted to the right, meaning fewer and fewer men are deemed to be attractive, and these men at the top get more and more sexual access while the men at the bottom get less and less. There's no such thing as like fair. Yeah. Like people have this, like especially these same kind of guys we're talking about, right? Mm. They have this concept in their head that get what they deserve. Mm. That doesn't happen. And we just went through a bunch of examples. Like these same guys would not expect right. Riley Reed to get a, right. a, a right. husband. Your, your girl is I... going to cheat on you. And you think because your mommy told you that you're too special for her. No, bro. She's on a boat in Biscayne <laughs> with 27 <laughs> dudes in her DMs trying to fly her places and give her money. Yeah. Like you want her to pay for it. And like some of them actually might, but it won't be because you wished for it. It's going to be just because of certain like sexual economic realities that happen. She gets older or whatever, and she's less desired. That's the only reason why it will happen. It's not karma though, bro. Yeah. And if you, the problem is when you focus on karma against women, instead of your bench press max and your business, and your own peace of mind, your own intellect, your own charisma, and your own education, if you don't focus on that and all you focus on is hurting the woman, all you're going to do is live in that plate, that disgusting place where you're you're just like, you're again, one more time, you're calling a girl a slut who wouldn't fuck you. Yeah. What does that say about you? One of the biggest copes I see all the time, is, like I personally get attacked for, is like a good woman wouldn't want to date you, Sterling, because of my past and yeah, right, well, yeah. having been a so, yeah. Every girlfriend I've had for the last like three years has been like either super religious Bro. or like a ridiculously low body. Can we talk about this? This is one of the issues. And again, yeah. at some point, I'd like to have uh, Alex Datesyke on. He talks about this sociosexual group. And the same thing, Jasmine Jafar made this argument. The sociosexual group of men only sleep with the sociosexual group of women. That just isn't the case. Not true. If you have any guy friends who are male, who are VIP hosts, male strippers, guys who've just been with like hundreds of hundreds of women, you find out that they date just as many girls with low body counts who are just like good girls because attraction triggers are ubiquitous yeah. amongst women. This idea Idea, idea that only the sociosexual women date only the sociosexual men is simply not the case. All you have to do is find any guy who has a lot of experience with women and he'll show you very easily. And so that's the thing. What they did though is they try to say, well, there isn't a group of men that are these men who have high body counts at the top. So top 5% of men, it's about 50 a lifetime sexual partners, top 1% of men, it's 150 sexual partners. There's like, well, yeah, but it's, they're all sleeping with the same group of girls. And I just, I can tell you that's not the, not case. the case. That's absolutely not the case. Not true, yeah. it's, a, it's just a cope. And I haven't seen any data to show that that is the case. Well, there may be a sociosexual group of women that are out there. The top 5% of women have had 35 sexual partners. The top 5% of women have had 16 sexual partners and the top 1% have had 35. So it's four times more for men than women. That doesn't match up. If sociosexual mm -hmm. men are sleeping with sociosexual women, that doesn't match up. And then empirically, I can just show you like any one of these guys who's really good with women, like it's just not the case, right? Yeah. I'll show you something else too, is that like guy, these same kind of guys who just live on their keyboards and don't actually live in the real, yeah. real world at all. They have this perception that like you say, maybe, maybe women like you, who work in adult film or whatever, right? They sex workers. Sex workers in general. They have this perception <laughs> that the sex, like a sex worker, is super easy to sleep with, mm -hmm. right. compared to like. Compared to say like the the you know the good girl from yeah. Boise Idaho or whatever, it's, it's completely not the case. By the way, by the way, by the, right. they also think that the girl who went to college and is in a sorority has a lower body count than the than the OnlyFans sex worker who's only her husband on camera and oh, no yeah. one else. Bingo. That is the other part that is just mind blowing to me. Is like when I see that kind of stuff and I'm like, yo, bro, that girl that you met, the, the Sally from accounting, <laughs> that girl has been with a lot of dudes, but she doesn't know that. <laughs> it's real talk. Like I've, I've just seen it over and over again. You, Talk about how my friend did triple the other Oh, yeah. So, you, you, hold on. <laughs> Sally from Accountant Beach, she'd be getting around. Right. <laughs> really she'd be getting around. Right. I'm not like at, that anymore. She's always groomed. She'd be looking at the depreciation yeah. of dick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's Sally yeah, from no, Accounting. No, so one of my friends, she flew into Vegas and she hooked up with this guy. Hooked up with this guy. Then Just say who the guys are. You don't have to say who she is. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who the first guy was, yeah. like some groupie dude, whatever. And then she went and hooked up with her ex-boyfriend. And then she oh. went and hooked up with Waka Flocka afterwards. In the same wow. night. All in the same night. She oh. pulled a triple. PH. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. See, th this is my favorite thing. The Waka Flocka that walked off a fresh bit. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this, is my fa this is my favorite thing. Whenever you girls talk about this stuff, we talk about having sex with three dudes at the same time. It's never that's gross. It's always, oh, my vagina pH balance will be off. Nobody clip this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, no, my, my Travis, my mark that. It, so it's, it's, it's the, it is yeah. it's what, like whenever I started meeting some of these girls and they were, they had been like, yeah, I've been with like four dudes in my whole life and they film on OF and it doesn't mm -hmm. make sense because the guys think that those girls are easier yeah. and it really, it doesn't even work out that way because they've also transmuted what sexual intercourse means to them. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, it's like, you think it's easier for them, but in their mind, it's like, I'm going to get something for this. You yeah, see well, what I'm saying? No, it's not just that the girl that I see often is the one that is absolutely certain that she wants a relationship with every guy she sleeps with. So she ends up sleeping with one guy and she has a boyfriend for six months and then another boyfriend for six mm -hmm. months and then another one and another, she can't make them stick she can't make it work her views are unrealistic and then afterwards in her mind she's like i'm a good girl because i want a relationship but then she's been with more dudes than the girl who just sleeps around. I feel like women definitely get more of a better rap if they're but doing it. It's like, because uh, women, well, it's more more available for women yeah. to do well, that. Like, guy, it takes a lot of skill for a guy to be able to do that. For women, it's not it's not the same set of criteria. We always say, like, don't date the stripper if you don't want her to be a stripper, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you can't start dating a stripper and be like, I want you to get out of it, blah, 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 blah. Like, knew, you knew what you were getting into when you started this thing. They tried. Absolutely. Sort of. Remember I said before, there's three I genders. There's high-status yeah, men, there's like, women, and there's low-status men. Low-status men are going to date the hottest thing they can get their hands on, and they don't care about your political affiliation or how close you are with your family because they don't have any options. Yeah. So, like, the idea is, like, well, you should have known better when you started dating me. No, that stripper is the best thing he's ever going to get because as everything gets shifted to the right, meaning fewer and fewer men are deemed to be attractive, and these men at the top get more and more sexual access while the men at the bottom get less and less. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, please watch Scott Galloway. He goes over this. If dating were a country, it'd be Venezuela. It's so inequitable <laughs> the way it's going right now. And by the way, those of you who are trying to say, love Jasmine, but she's trying to say that there is no crisis in dating and that hypergamy doesn't manifest. And my whole issue with that is then go ahead and argue with William Costello. Go ahead and argue with fucking Scott Galloway, go ahead and argue with David Buss, go ahead and argue with all these guys that are coming, uh, and, and Richard Reeves, they've all come to the same conclusion. There is a crisis when it comes to dating. That is absolutely true. Whenever I hear this, like, uh, what do you bring to the table? I'm going to be my man's piece. No, you're not going to be a man's yeah, piece. Yeah, what you can do is not distract. <laughs> a side piece, not, maybe. <laughs> not distract from his piece, yeah. right? And then especially yeah. when it gets in, we had uh, Lolo on here last yeah. week. Yeah. And she's like, I, I'm dating, if I'm dating a very successful man, I understand that I, if I, I need to not introduce chaos into his life. Yeah, right? it's, a, it's an attempt tension thing too yeah. like if a, if a guy is super successful and he's busy and he's running it like he's running a business or whatever like he she has to realize that his attention is very very valuable mm -hmm. and yeah. so he can't give her all of the attention she might want yes every every it's, minute it's, of every day and i think i think that's what a lot of guys mean when they mm -hmm. say like they want their peace they just mm -hmm. want to be left the f alone yes yeah. like, so that's what i was gonna say like you have to like they're gonna want to spend time with you mm -hmm. because they they like you For they sure. enjoy your presence yeah. but you have to realize that what they're doing takes time and mm -hmm. give them the time that they need to do their work. And when they're doing their like, work, remove it's, yourself. And when they're doing their work, it's not because they hate you. When they want to be, when they want to <laughs> be, yeah. quiet, money. it's not because yes. they're mad at you. It's well, because they're making money. You take care of them. It's yeah. like they should be supportive in the process of that. Well, yeah, it's like also, every few yeah. hours, I'll come in and ask if you want food. The issue is when you have a guy who's like a trust fund kid or dealer he has plenty of time and money to spend with her and then so every every guy she dates from that point subsequently she's kind of ruined because she starts thinking well this guy should have a ton of time with me is like well how is he going to pay for your life or he has he has a ton of money in which case he doesn't have the time for you because that's how most he hasn't texted me back in 30 minutes oh my <laughs> exactly God. Yeah, i don't need peace i need a pit crew i need somebody like with well, the tires are flat help me put the damn tires back put some yeah. fuel back in the tank get me back on the road again that's well, if you're really I'm busy you're not paying people yeah. like you're not doing that yourself you're paying somebody yeah. to do all those things for and i need them to get those tires off and back on again in less than 30 <laughs> seconds <laughs> yeah. here's another way of respecting your time if you want ladies if you want something from a man tell him what you want and stop <laughs> thinking he's supposed to just know but again it's one of the worst things i've seen one of the worst characteristics i've seen when i talk to some of my female friends they're like he should just know what i want and i'm like do you not understand he's <laughs> like because the problem is you think you're leaving breadcrumbs and you're not you're not doing a great job of that and also this is the key to passive aggressive communication yeah. this is something they warn about when you join the military you have to be direct and you have to just like he should just know to come in here and ask how i'm feeling i'm like <laughs> But do you understand people want to kill him? Do you understand people want to take his money? They want to take his job. Do you understand the level of stress that he goes through so that you don't have to do that? And it's just crazy to me whenever I hear women say he should just know. He should not just know. That's not how this works. Well, right? that's the difference between female and male communication, yes. right? Like girls just think that they, they, they're like, oh, well, you should know what I want. And he's like, there's like that scene from the notebook. You should just get it. And he's like holding her up against the car and he's like, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but what I'm trying to explain to you guys, if any ladies are listening to this, if, if you worked in my company and you were like, 
Michael should just know what I want. I would fire you. <laughs> like you're just ru- because it's like it's not only that you are ruining the culture of my company, you're spreading your passive aggressive passive aggressive behavior is a disease. If I talk sh- about Niku to and talk sh- about N- N- Niku to someone else over here, then now he has to hold the secret that I told him. Now he's being passive aggressive. Now my inner b- is causing him to be a b- it's like that's how mm-hmm. passive aggressive behavior acts. Ladies, if you can just go to your man and be like, <laughs> I'd like for you to ask me how my day was right now, I'll be like, Yes, of course. Finally, I'm getting some direction because i'm being pulled in 19 different directions i feel like everybody wants to be like oh how come you're not asking how i'm feeling but they don't ask hey how are you doing yes yeah. mm-hmm. for sure no well like i've had conversations with guys where i'm like i'm gonna bitch for a few minutes and i just need you to incredible. sit down and listen incredible uh, incredible uh, are we ready for uh, <laughs> not about the nail i mean i agree with the direct <laughs> assertive communication yeah. style but on the other hand make him think it's his idea Sure, that's oh, fine yeah, too. That's, how men work. that's right. Manipulate your man, ladies. Get make sure you manipulate. Not in like a cruel or like a mean way, but give give. No, it in a nice way, but manipulate him for sure. 